you get started here in a few minutes. <clears throat> Give everybody a second to kind of uh, everybody, the, the few people who join us weekly, uh, give them a second to trickle in, I think. Um, so today we're going to be going back through Esperanto and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I'm always, I guess I always say that I'm always excited about it, but, uh, today it's going to be super special because over this last week, I've been posting the um, the stream to YouTube and Reddit, and uh, I've had some really good feedback on it, which has been really amazing. And uh, one of the things that I got a lot of feedback wa about was if you click one of these guys, you can click this little light bulb, and it's going to give us uh, tips and notes. Sorry, I got to... Got to do the obligatory Ask Mongo how it sounds today. <laughs> um, come on, girl. There we are. Now I've got my chat up. Um, so, like I was saying, so the, this has got tips and notes on it, which is something that um, I don't know if there was during the beta or if I just didn't know about it, um, but I'm definitely glad that I know about it now. So... <laughs> This is just the intro one, right? Is that what I clicked? So intros. We won't go back through all of these. Don't worry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hash you to death with all of the same, same stuff. But while we're uh, while we're giving people a second to to trickle in, we'll we'll do some review of these. So um, this is something that I was uh, I was told by a Reddit user that it was very that I thought was very important. Um, the emphasis on every word is on the next to last syllable. So Two syllable words have the emphasis first, as in viro, right? And three syllable have the emphasis in the middle as as in knab knabino, right? So you like you heavily do the middle. And I have to assume theoretically that it's because the last syllable in any of the Esperanto words are um The, 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 all the modifiers are usually at the end, right? So if it's going to be um, plural, if it's going to be male, if it's going to be female, all of those things are going to come up on there. So, uh, doo -doo -doo. trying to make sure this doesn't click up in the wrong. <laughs> I don't want you guys to accidentally see all my stuff. Okay. Um, it sounds like. We're going to turn this up a little bit and see if maybe now you can hear it. I've been playing these cafe sounds in the background, but um, it sounds like maybe they haven't been coming through to you guys. So maybe I need to send it there. Um, I played in voice meter banana and that's been a, uh, I'm not an audio person by trade. Sheriff Mongo really is, but, um, I'm more, I'm much more into like the overlays and stuff like that. So, um, he does a lot of my audio for me <laughs> or he helps me with a lot, of, a lot of it. So we go back and forth. Um, it's great to have somebody else who streams in your house cause they really understand what it's like to, um, well, to, to need the feedback. So, um, so anyways, so back to the syllable thing. So I thought that was really interesting. It's definitely going to change how I enunciate a lot of the Esperanto words. Um, also, she said this one. So of course, like the simple things that she tells me are in like the first, in the introduction, and like you should have paid attention to this. Brihilda. <laughs> all action words, so all verbs. Always end in AS when you're talking about what is happening now. So present tense. Mi laboras, uh, vivenas, li learnas, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but only for present tense, I believe. So I think, I think we're actually going to get into tenses today and uh, learn a little bit more about those. Oop. I, just, I just hit my chair a little bit. I just broke, I didn't break the desk. Just almost. <laughs> I almost broke the desk. Bonan Matanan. It is nice to see you. 
Ah. Me. I'm doing pretty well. I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, the baby's feeling better, so that helps. And uh, it was he. He only he wasn't he was sick, and then on top of it, two of his molars came in. So it was. He's just like a little baby, so it was it was mean. <laughs> it, it was sad. Made me feel bad for him. All right. So we've gone through level two on these, on the intros, the phrases, the weather. Um, I think we might do plurals on every day again just to get them up to level two and to do a little bit of recap. And then um, we'll get back. We'll start this checkpoint. God, I feel like I started this checkpoint forever ago, um, but I guess not. <laughs> uh, I guess not. Okay. So let's go. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's go. No review today. I'm going in naked. Let's learn about some languages. But before we learn about, oh, are you not going to let me? There we go. Before we do it, we will actually check out this light bulb. Um, so to name languages in Esperanto, the full expression would be the blank language, right? So the French language, the English language. However, people often drop the language or lingvo and say the English, the French. Now, if you're hearing the English or the French um, they're talking about the language, not the people. So I would like to, I hope we get into this a little bit more today to see what, how you talk to, like, about a collective people. Like, how would you talk about people from the U.S.? Would you have to say, like, people from the U.S.? Or would you say, because you can say English speakers. There's English speakers everywhere. Oh, do you have a, you have a, um, do you have two kids? I feel like I might be mixing you up with somebody else. Uh, Sen. You like this layout? I, uh, I like it too. I, um, I spent a lot of hours trying to figure out what I, what I wanted to do. And, uh, I think it looks kind of, I don't know, it looks kind of generic, but at least it's easy to see on multiple formats. <laughs> um, Oni. So Oni is equivalent to one in English, but it is not, it's more like the royal we. It's, uh, <laughs> so it's not like, that person, it's not the genderless they, right? So it is, it is one as in like, you know, people say that vaccine, vaccines give kids autism and those people are wrong. Um, absolutely wrong. But if you were to talk about those kinds of like a group of people, um, you know, people always say, oh, well, they told me and your mom's like, they who? Oni. <laughs> or Oni? Oni? Ten-year-old boy. Oh, yeah, your teething days are, are way, but actually, you're probably getting into adult teeth territory now, yeah? I think I got my braces on when I was, like, 12 or 13, maybe? And I had to, I had to have, like, nine teeth pulled. It was gnarly. Um, okay, the subordinate clauses introduced by Key... Uh, so leave out the and say, what? Okay, so this right here. He says you speak Esperanto instead of he says that you speak Esperanto. Oh, well, that makes sense. However, key must always be included. Can you see all the way over there? Yeah. Well, thanks for lurking. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> I just slammed a bunch of banana nut bread in my face <laughs> before the stream started. Um, and then neck. So we're going to learn neck, which is neither nor key, which is kind of, which is that only, which is one. Um, and we're going to go into language. So I'm pretty excited. Oh, I could have just, could I have clicked that from here? Look at this. Is this my first time using Duolingo? Pull it together. No, I did do that, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Write this in English. Ĉu vi parolas Esperanton? Ĉu vi parolas Esperanton? Ĉu vi parolas Esperanton? Esperanton? <laughs> so I think he's influxing the, the question at the end. Ĉu vi parolas Esperanton? <laughs> do you... Do you speak Esperanto? Okay. So not, not like key, like a key, K-E-Y. It's more like a K. Like kick. 
<laughs> Orca laughter. Uh, they learn an English word, Eli Lernas, right? Anglan Vorton, English word. Chula Angla estas facila lingvo. I guess I should have been like lingvo. Um, so, is the English language an easy language, right? So, is English... Hmm... I mean, like, it's got to start with is. Is English. I couldn't, I can't say a lot of work. Um, ew, that doesn't sound. Is English an, oh, an easy language. Oh, my brain didn't put that together, that sentence structure together at all. Like, not even a little bit. I could not see that. <laughs> I was speaking like a <laughs> like a caveman. It's English language, easy. <laughs> Is the word in English or Esperanto? Uh, chu. La vorto. Is the word in English, Anglan? Or uh, oh, Esperanto. Ooh, no, I was wrong. Chuli vorto estas in la angla. Oh, I was way wrong on this. Okay, so let's look at the discussion a little bit about this because I want to see what people are saying. Um, Chu la vorto estas or chu estas la vorto. So there, there has to be an estas. And that's the thing is I'm, I was missing the verb in that, right? There has to be a verb in the sentence. So even if the verb is estas, where it's like just being, um, it just has to be there, right? I like languages. Mishatas. Lingvoin. Ah, all right. I feel like I'm not getting any sound from uh, Duolingo. Let me reload this real quick. Okay, hopefully that'll work better. Um, they are not learning much. They ne learnas multi, right? Because learnas is your verb here, so you don't need estas. They are not learning much. Esperanto is a good language. Uh, now, this is going to be Esperanto and not Esperanto. Not Esperanto. Esperanto. <laughs> because uh, it's, not, it's not being acted upon correctly. So, Esperanto... I don't have to use Lingvo, right? Estas bona lingvo. Yes. Uh, today we are learning four words in Esperanto. Um, actually, I think today we'll probably, we're going to learn more. Um, in the discussions, you see advice from someone called Sal... Salavanto. You can trust it. Oh, he's an Esperanto teacher. Okay, very interesting. Um, I know from the... I'm in the Duolingo Esperanto learners group, for those of you who want to try and creep out who I actually am. Um, and uh, there's um, Chuck Smith is another one, but I can never remember what his uh, S-A-L-I-V-A-N-T-O. Um... <laughs> My post-its are growing. It's like three post-its for the third part of Esperanto. One post-it for every time. 
<laughs> really is going to match my overlay because I'll just have post-its and pieces of scrap paper everywhere. Um, but so he's a really good one too. And so is, there's a couple of, uh, there's another woman who did a lot in the, in the beta who does it too. Amazulo, is that, is that right? I've seen that username before. Hmm. He was more, Chuck Smith did more, um, if I remember correctly, he did a lot more like, um, did he do more like technical, um, uh, not like technical, like backend platform stuff, but, uh, technical stuff within the beta. Yeah. Twitch has got, it's, it does have a couple seconds of late. I'm actually running on, um, I'm running on low latency mode too. And so like it should show a lot more, but it doesn't. Um, original organizer. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that he was like, he was like the main dude. Um, I talked to him about this, this stream a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah. Wikipedia, Wikipedia translation. Yeah. And I think a lot of, um, what came from Duolingo came from, uh, a lot of the websites that already exist out there, obviously because language does, but, um, a lot of the discussions I think on Duolingo a different because you don't get that in other places. Yeah, Twitch used to have 30 second and it was bad. I can, I actually still can have the 30 second delay. Um, it's to stop stream sniping, but I'm not really worried that people are going to be mean to me on, on Duolingo. It's not really the, it's kind of like going to a hockey game. Like, you know, nobody's going to be mean. You're just going to have a great time. <laughs> um, okay, so today, uh, Hodiao, right? Because, <laughs> uh, Second syllable and AU is pronounced like ow. So ho di ow. We. Sorry, I keep playing with this pen. That's probably a super annoying noise. Ni is we? Yeah. Right? Me. V. Ni. Ho di ow. Ho di I always say ha da. Ha da. Hodiao, Hodiao, uh, ni learn us. We are learning kvar vortoin. Kvar? I need to. I need to read. I need to look at how to pronounce that again too. Kvar vortoin. Vortoin. Oh, I'm, I'm falling apart. Can you see it? Um, and now here I'm gonna say in Esperanto. Right? Not in Esperanto because no. No, because N would be a speaker. If there's an N at the end of it, it's going to be an, uh, an Esperanto speaker. Is that correct? Kvar is fine. Yeah, it's not. Um, KV is a very, like, that's not something that really occurs in the English language. That's much more um, a Slavic language thing, right? If there's a U after the vowel, it's always U. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so you can't stream snipe me on Duolingo. I mean, like, what's the worst you can do? You can like send me ling lingots or like <laughs> something like that. But, uh, I think I'm going to be streaming maybe next week or this week. Um, a couple of, a couple of moms learning to play Overwatch <laughs> and, uh, then, then stream sniping will be an issue. Uh, if there's one thing women or people like to shoot in video games is people that they know are women. <laughs> um, okay. Ili parolas Esperantan kai la anglan. Ili de... I went way too fast through that and I butchered all of it. Um, they speak Esperanto and kai and English. I am learning English and Esperanto. Well, I guess I'm still learning English, right? Aren't we always? Uh, chula angla estas facila lingvo. Uh, chula angla is English and easy language. That was the one that I had, I had bonkered before. <laughs> I really wish I could use the keyboard on this, but like, okay, let's say I'm going to do the keyboard. Um, chu. Oh, this is going way faster. Oh, last time I tried to do, um, last time I tried to type, it was so delayed I couldn't do it. Uh, chula vorto. 
uh, is the word in la angla ooh what's or is it sir yeah uh, yeah to in la angla ow in esperanto oh the estas it gets me again uh the estas will always get me I'm so unfamiliar with using something like that, that it just kills me. So what did I say here? So I said, is the word in English or Esperanto, right? Hmm. But once again, okay. From now on, I'm just checking that there's a verb in every sentence before I submit it. So, chu. La vorto estas en la angla sir en la en. No, do I need la? La? What? Hmm. Ah! Ooh, it was not sir. What is what is sir? Why am I mixing that up? You said the word in English, or yeah, sir is on. Okay, on top. Yeah, like, like sir la table. Like, um, okay, <laughs> I should I should have known that. Um, you said the word in English or Esperanto. So, even though chew is here, it doesn't necessarily indicate that you're like. So, if I have chew, I need estas. Is that correct? Like, if I, I'm never going to be able to use chu without a verb. Uh. Yay! <laughs> but I still type on it. Um, how did I typo that? Did I? Oh, the C must not be CH, huh? Um, let's look at our... Let's go back and look at... Shoot, what was I just doing? Um, at, ch at chu, right? Is it under phrases, maybe? C by itself is about making a sentence into a question. So having the, the CU there is kind of like a, it's just a, quesi, a question designator. It's like um, looking at a, looking down at a sentence and seeing a question mark at the end. Um, or like, I guess in, is it Spanish that sometimes, or uh, not Spain Spanish, more like Mexican Spanish that has it in front of a question? I should know Sir Latab. I'm I'm a cook professionally, so. <laughs> okay, this wasn't the one I'm looking for. Maybe I'm looking for accusative. Accusative? <laughs> yeah, I think both Spanishes do as well. I always I always feel bad because I want to talk about like Mexico Spanish and say Mexican, but then it just sounds like I'm being ignorantly racist and <laughs> I'm, tr I'm purposely trying not to. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I'm not worried about it. We'll figure it out. Okay, let's go back to languages because I'm bonker in this. And, uh, and try again. All right. Lesson two. The man and the woman sing. I think I'm going to, if uh, the keyboard's going to continue to work. I might, I might try and see if it, if it goes. Uh, la viro, kai la virino. Yeah, no special particle. 
how do you think, um, do you think that makes, uh, for, for Spanish having those, do you think it makes it more difficult for speaking or do you think, well, I feel like almost in any language, the end of the sentence kind of like, uh, when you're trying to ask a question, um, but if you're not a native speaker, you might not know that you're listening for a question. Whereas in Esperanto, you know that they're asking you, I mean, they're directly asking you something. So even if you're just like, uh-huh, 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 you could be like, oh, I need to pay attention to this. <laughs> they're, they're actually talking to me. La Vida Rokai, La Verino. Oh, what is sing? Have we learned sing? Cantas. I should have known that that's the name of my, uh, or part of the name of my World of Warcraft demon hunter. <laughs> now, if I were to say the man and the women, the man and the woman are singing, would it be La Viro Kai, La Verino, Estas Cantas? Uh, like, is singing? parolas la hispanan? Yeah, the same. Chuvi parolas la hispanan? Chuvi parolas la hispanan? Chuvi parolas la hispanan? Hispanan. Yeah, the CZ, the CZY. Um, since Esperanto, oh, excuse me. Since Esperanto is such a Polish and Slavic language, it's very, it's far from Mandarin in Japanese. Like that's, if, if you're looking for something that's like way different, Esperanto is definitely a lot closer to the Latin and, and languages than it is that. But if you don't speak English and you speak something like Japanese or Mandarin, then learning Esperanto first is where it's at. Um, is your or is that more of a do ah do you speak and then this should be spanish right hispanic or it looks like hispanic i guess i could have also said are you speaking um Chu V Parolas. Ooh, it's Italian. Italio? No. Because it's going to end in A, right? Chu V Parolas la Italian? Or Italian? Yeah. There's no, uh, no um, second I in there. I have three French dictionaries. Well, that's insane. You should donate one. Um, unless they come from different generations. <laughs> Look at this. Me has. <laughs> uh, <laughs> straight caveman talk. Like, I feel like anytime I'm doing this, I just, my English goes straight down into, like, gutter English. <laughs> um, because you can't direct translate, right? So you're trying to do concepts. Um... So if you don't, if you don't use "chu" the same way in Polish, if you're if it's not every time you ask a question, would it be more like? Would you use it if you're like trying to get somebody's attention that it's going to be a question, or is it just more like the words kind of fallen off and it's implied? Me have us tree, T R I, yeah. Uh, French is la, let's see if I did that right, F-R-A-C-A, -A? mm-hmm, dictionaries, uh, that I don't remember at all, Vort, Vorteroin? So that looks kind of like, um, well, Vorto is word. J-N means lots of words. Oh. Okay, so I said I have three French dictionaries. Technically, but I should have said I have three dictionaries in French. 
So this is kind of the same as when we were saying um, the you know the boy's mom instead was uh, the mother of the boy. So I need to be. So are my are my adjectives always going to go in front of their subject? Does it zamo? Can't remember the keyboard shortcut to make this little thing. Chuadamo only. Have we learned only? Oh yeah. That was ner. Oh, okay. A dictionary is a word group. That makes sense. Uh, the AR. AR suffix. So. Could you. Okay, so they can't come before or after. Okay, well, we'll see then. <laughs> At least I got this one right. <laughs> Thank you for uh, everyone for all of your your help and input. It's it's very hard to learn a language um, by yourself when you aren't able to use it, and even using it like I was on um, like on Facebook, and uh, you know I even had like my Facebook proper in Esperanto, and even then like you use it, but it's not the same as interacting um, live with people. Oh no, you're definitely not spamming. Don't worry. <laughs> That's what I kind of love about. Um, about this specifically is that um, the more people chat and the more people interact, the better it is. And I just have such a love of like anything that shares knowledge. Um, I used to actually, I used to teach for corporate and I just, I just love sharing cool stuff. <laughs> people should just learn all the time. Changes the connotation. That may, no, that makes sense. So adjective noun is more normal to you than noun adjective. So, but like if I was running around, I wouldn't be like the cat blue. I'd be like the blue cat. So adjective noun sounds familiar to me too. Um, but when I think of like French, yeah. So like I would say French, like the dictionary is French. I wouldn't be like dictionaries in French. But I guess if you, I guess if you have the subject title first, or if you have the subject first and you know what they're then describing, maybe it's easier to picture instead of being like, um, like okay, somebody's saying the fat blue, and like as I'm thinking, I'm like okay, it's something, it's, it's something, it's fat, it's something, it's blue. It could be a rhinoceros or an elephant or I don't know, um, I don't know, <laughs> something else that's big and blue. Um, and then by the time you get to cat, somebody's like okay. It, it, morphs in their head and they know what you're talking about but if you start off saying like you're talking about the cat and then you start describing it as fat and blue and everything else then it's like okay now I have your subject and now you have your modifiers to it and you know or your adjectives to it la cata blua might sound like you're emphasizing like it's the blue one. Oh, like like I've seen all of these cats and it is that one Yeah, Spanish does it too. V is that viejo? I got it. <laughs> like we're talking about Spanish on here. <laughs> the Spanish language is not easy. Uh, la hispan. Ugh. I'm doing terrible with this. Hispana. I don't have to write lingvo, right? Because that's optional. I can drop that. So, la hispana es ne estas casila? Is that correct? That is correct. Yay! Okay, I'm getting it. So, no difference. It's just um, that's something that kind of lends itself to however you speak. Um, I want to say colloquially, but that's more about like how you write, isn't it? Um, but it, so that allows some flexibility in if you're speaking to someone from another language that might 
might put them in the wrong, might put them in a different order. How does one drink beer in the United States? A lot. Multi? Multi beer on? Maybe not for, uh, not, not for Sen, right? You're the one that doesn't drink beer? Um, how does one drink beer? Keely, or Keel? <laughs> Keely. I was trying to do Keel and Oni into one word. Uh, Keel Oni trinkas beer on in Esuno. Does one in the US? So this would be like, oh no, that's got fruit on it and never mind. That was a word that doesn't even... Oh, you also don't drink beer. I didn't for a long time. I hated it until I moved... Uh, <laughs> until I moved to Japan and all I could drink was really cheap craft beer. And then I moved to Seattle where it was all really good craft beer. <laughs> and uh, so it was, kind of, it was kind of like wine for me. I had to learn how to appreciate it and how to... But like I can't, I can't just like Kavanaugh six pack down and call it good. Um, well, I guess I can, really. Um, <laughs> uh, Lavorto, the word is not in the dictionary. Look, I'm starting to translate as I'm reading it. Lavorto ne estas en la... Whoa, I'm trying not to look at the words. Uh, it was... Vo, well, word is vorto, so it was vor, vorteroin? Or, oh, well, I don't need the JN, right? I just need the AR. Uh, so it would be this one. La Vorto. La Vorto ne estas en la Vortero. Or La Vorto ne estas en Usono Vortero. Yeah. That would be an English dictionary, correct? Um. <laughs> in the summer? In the summertime. I assume, I assume La Somero is summer. The opposite of often is seldom. I can see that. Well, seldom and sometimes are, f are a little bit different. Seldom is a little bit more like rarely. Um, whereas sometimes is like, Sometimes can be kind of a 50-50. It's like sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. So if you're talking often, that has happening more frequently than sometimes. And if something is happening seldom, it is less often than sometimes. So I think, I think sometimes actually kind of falls in the middle. My expert opinion. <laughs> uh, do you have an Esperanto dictionary? Uh, Chuvi Havas, Vorteron de, Esper de Esperanto. D. <laughs> de Esperanto. Uh, <laughs> so stupid. Uh, okay, so this one's not going to get me again. So it's V O R T, word, A R, word group. Or dictionary. JN. I like that. I need the O. And now is it gonna be N or is it gonna be Dela? And la <laughs> I was thinking a question, sorry about a question mark. <laughs> Oh, that is pretty cool. Ah! I use T-R-E, which is very, instead of T-R-I, which is three. And why does it need to be day? Could I say they're in, in, they're in the French language? I wonder if there's a discussion on this. Oh, here's the, who you were talking about, uh, Salivanto. Never, seldom, sometimes, often, always. Yeah, I think that's kind of where the range of word, words goes to. But it depends on connotation, right? Because sometimes could be something completely different to a different culture. They could be like, oh, sometimes the lions come out at night, so we prep for it all the time. You know what I mean? Where it's like, <laughs> that's different than saying that they... <laughs> well... <laughs> 
don't fight with lions. <laughs> Um, okay, so word order in Esperanto can be flexible. This is what the this is the teacher you guys were talking about. Adjectives usually go before the noun, but can sometimes be placed after the noun for special emphasis. So if it was, um, unless there is some kind of special emphasis, the best word order is adjective, adjective noun. So varman lactan right here, warm milk. The notes say that noun adjective order is correct, but not all sentences have the alternative. Um, so he says, because of Duolingo and the way that it works, your best bet is to put adjectives before nouns, but when you're speaking or if you're using it in practicality, you would want to use the adjective after if it's going to be something, something like, if like, if there's a difference between being like the warm milk and you're like, whoa, that milk is like warm. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's when you would be like, like, like lactate larva and people are like, oh. <laughs> Tree, for, for turn. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it can't hurt, right? It can't, it can't hurt to adjective noun. Um, especially because if you're consistent, as people learn to speak to you, they learn your speech pattern and then their brain kind of just like cuts out, right? Like the more they speak to you and the more that they understand how you speak, not just language wise, but, um, in a diction point of view and a word order point of view, um, that, so if I, for example, I talked to a girlfriend of mine who speaks, um, primarily Japanese, but also English. And the more I speak to her, the f like, my brain kind of shuts off and stops listening to all of the, the, the is a, you know, all of that. And it just picks what it needs to out of context to keep up with people. So if you're just making a habit of doing adjective down, then people who talk to you will learn that speech pattern and it'll be easier to communicate anyways. Oh, this just, oh, I always feel like I get stuck on one sentence and then it just it yells at me forever. Okay, T R I. No. Shoot, now. I'm, yeah. T R I is three. T R E is very. Tree. I, I like this, like, the, getting the root word and then the, everything that modify it, modifies it afterwards makes spelling it out and stuff actually pretty easy. Uh, so we're going to do de la instead. But it didn't say why. It does sound like a team of the defensive duo Lunga. D D <laughs> it sounds like a bunch of hooligans. <laughs> the duo Lingans. <laughs> Get off of my yard, you duo Lingans. <laughs> um. Okay, I wanted to go over here and see if I can find day and la in these. What would that be? Every day? Mm -hmm. Nope. Possessive? No, it wouldn't be possessive. Ah! Bonker. One of these guys. One of these days I'll learn to use it. Okay, day. Here we go. If you want to express that something belongs to someone, the keyword is de. So I couldn't use en la ingvo or en la Fran Franca? Franca? Because it's just a different connotation than saying it's de la. So saying de that the that the dictionary like belongs to that sounds like it belongs to the French language, not like it belongs to me, and it's in French. Okay, so... Duo, yeah, Duolingo wants de. And I tried in. Um, I think, I think 
they sound like legit sentences, and I feel like I would I would know from context, but this comes back to maybe the defense of Duolingo. Like, it's, maybe it's not a big deal. Um, like, okay, you couldn't use it here. You couldn't say in la universitato because you couldn't say the map or here is a map in the university or of, of the universe. Mm -hmm. I think it might, um, might be kind of maybe trial and error. Just uh, getting used to it and using it. Um, so it says, it's also used when English would put an apostrophe S. So if they were to pluralize something. So he, if you were to say, here's the university's map, instead of apostrophe S, de la... Well, and that makes sense uh, more, because that goes back to saying, um, like, the mother of the boy. Instead of the boy's mother, right? Because there is no boy's, there is no, there is no knabi, no, or knabo apostrophe S. Yes. I wonder if I should, I'm actually just going to do this lesson again. Um, <laughs> if I'm, if I'm going to have this much uh, back and forth on it, I might as well just do the lesson again, right? Um, here is... Ooh, I don't even remember seeing this word. So, uh, Genestas, here is Mia Homo. Ah, Hamo, right? I also could have just said. Gen me, but okay. So why don't I need the estas here? Don't I always need an adjective? Or I'm sorry. Um, don't I always need a verb? There's no discussion on this one. So I could just be like, "Here, my house." Gen mapo en la universidad. Universitado is like a map of Australia that happens to be. So it's like, that's like literally in the university. And so when you're talking about language, you're not saying like it's in the language. You're saying it, it belongs to the language because it is, it is, it is from the language, so to speak. Right. <laughs> Behold. <laughs> Is it, uh, is it always so, <laughs> do you always use it so, um, enthusiastically? Like, are you always like, Jen? or do you always, or is it, can it also be like, here is also, okay, so this is definitely, uh, your, your influx matters, huh? Uh, Adama Kai... Sophia, Sophia. Uh, estas mia, is it Patroy? No, I don't know how to say it. Geo, G, is that J? Be a G, right? Yeah, like a Google. So, Gipatroy. JN, right? Because there's multiples and they're mine. Ah! Oh, okay. I forgot this. I need to be plural if they are plural. Chuvia patro estas en oficio? Chuvia patro estas en oficio? Chu is via is your your that's father dad yeah so your father in the office my father is a teacher oh is his teacher oh is a his it's a his <laughs> All right, that was just dumb. 
Um, Shia nomo esta Sofia. Shia nomo esta Sofia. I don't know if I like this keyword just because you all can see how much I typo. <laughs> um, her dogs are big, right? Ooh, I hadn't seen any of those words today. Well, I saw a couple. Pretty? That was pretty good. I'm a little proud. I knew that. I knew that. The Esperanto is, it's sticking. Um... Uh, do your parents live in Australia? His parents live in Australia. Does she... Oh, is she in your home? See, I'm on a roll right now, even because I went backwards, because I'm doing one of the easier ones. Uh, Adamo, Kai, Sofia, Estas. Would this, now, how would I pronounce the J at the end of, would I still say Miai? Would it be Mia, or would it be like Miai? Mie. Mie. Because the J is like a Y, right? Mie. <laughs> oh, I butchered the spelling of that completely. Um. Is me I sounds like um it sounds like the way my Japanese girlfriend makes fun of cats. Me I Okay, let's try this again. G E P A Patro, right? J N. Don't mess this up. Oh! But are, if they're parents and they're mine, wouldn't they be. There's no N? No real discussion there. An <laughs> uh, English A as in bath changes from... Yeah, it does. I mean, even... Everything changes. English is such a... I actually... I think I might do possessive again because I, I bit the dust on that. Um, it's so wildly spread that there's just an insane amount of modification to it. Like, if you come to America and you speak English, it's not the same as UK English and it's not the same as Australia English. And so much of all of these cultures are built off of, like, idioms. You know, they say, like, down down in the south, they say, like, you know, a hit dog will holler. But if you were to say that in, like, Australia, somebody might be like, I don't know what that means. Uh, their names. I'm me. You are V. We are knee. They are... Shoot. Ah! So, I would want to use SI on this, right? We haven't gotten to that yet. We haven't, we haven't even gotten to that word. Let's follow along with it. I don't know what a swamp, what a swamp is.
Ah, uh, shoot. Yeah, I. Phew. Shoot, man, I'm really gonna. Accusatives and plurals are just. I've gotta practice these when. Uh, I haven't been practicing Duolingo when I'm not when I'm not doing the stream because I figured if people are following along, I didn't want to like do a bunch and then, you know, review them less. But the more I go on and do this, the more I realize like I've got to do it through the week. And then um, I just I just can't move forward, you know, so people don't get lost or anything. But um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got to use the the accusatives more and the plurals. What? A, wait, just don't tell me. Never mind. What does it mean? <laughs> don't tease me. Oh, wait. Look, I just immediately started typing Adam and Sophia. Adam is a teacher at your, right? R Mia. What is your address? Adamo Kio estas via adreso? Adreso? Chula Mapo. Oh, I guess. Chula Mapo estas Lia or Shia? Is the map his or hers? Uh, I work at the university in London. Oh, see? Now, this is where that makes a big difference, right? Because it's not universe, universita, universitato in London. Because then that would be... Univers so this is the University of London, not a university in England. Is is word or English? Uh, subject, verb, object, matter, place, time? Oh, that's very interesting. Why didn't they teach me that one? You know, I was learning my own language. <laughs> so subject, verb, object, matter, place, time. So it would be like, I go to the store today. So object is what has the N. So it's not the subject of the sentence, it's what the subject is acting upon. Is that more? Uh, our? two dogs and three cats are in the house. I eat apple quickly at home today. See, in a, but in English you could easily be, you could easily say like, I quickly ate an apple or at home I ate an apple today quickly or Today, comma, I quickly ate an apple at home. You know what I mean? Like, that's just... <laughs> so, but the apple is, accus is accusative thus n because you are eating the apple. You are... The verb is acting upon that object. So the object that is being acted upon is the n. That makes sense. Uh... Ilia Petrino estas bona. Their mother is pretty. Oh no, their mother is good. Uh, their cats are small, right? Malgrandi. Excuse me. Uh, Ilia. No more. Estas Adamo Kai Sofia. Ilia Homo 
Hamel. Ilya Hamel estás en Londono, right? Because uh, it's not... It would be this one if they had multiple homes, right? And it would be this one if we were talking about going into their multiple homes, I think. Ad Adamo estas instruisto en ya universitato. Uh, Adam is a teacher in our university. I work in the at the University of London. Their mother is good. She's bona. Estas bona. We'll do one more. We'll just get it to level three and then we'll move on. Um, today, ho diao. Mm, friends. Ami. Amico. But there's lots of them, so there's a J. Uh, Vena is Venas coming? Venas. F de la. This is going to be way wrong. Hodia Venas Amicoi El Austral. <laughs> Australio. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> Australio. I got it. Finally, after all this time, I wouldn't just say Australia. Probably would have given it to you if you didn't. If you didn't, so it's I, it's because I use day and law. So day would be like f it's from Australia, right? Like be belonging to Australia. Both sound right, yeah. I, I feel like I feel like context would be. I I don't feel like anybody would make fun of me for it. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Maybe just a little. Um, that is. Shoot, I don't remember how to say that. Is it? It's not Kiel. Tio. Tio. Estas. It's it's gonna be Oni. Gia. Oh. Hey, Mo. I always just put the... It's an H, not an X. Or it's an X, not an H. It is, it is hard to spot the difference. And I feel like you could easily... If you're in a normal conversation, you could just ask for clarification, right? You could be like, this... Like, are you talking about this or this? And they, they could just tell you. Sofia estas... Mi... Amigo? Mia amigino. Wait... Why would she be... Oh, because she's a female friend. Mmm. I shouldn't have known that. She... Uh, and me... Avino. Her... Grandpa? No, I know. Grandmother. And my grand... Mother are friends. That's nice. Um, her grandfather, Avo, estas, is a friend of my grandfather. Shia uh, Avo estas amico de mia Avo. Eli estas bonai amicoi. Eli estas bonai amicoi. Bonai amicoi. They are good friends. I was excited about it. I did an exclamation point. <laughs> um, your grandmother is my 
friend. Female friend. Girlfriend, I guess, also would have been right. I think, I think people in the world are just generally more forgiving because we speak... I mean, like, how often are you speaking your language, like, properly um, in the way that you would write it out formally in the way that you would learn it? You know, we speak colloquially, uh, we write colloquially, and so... But when you're learning, there is no room for error, right? Because you have to teach them by the rules. Is that yours or mine? Yeah, I think it, I think it will be a slow. It's it's hard to make cultural change um, in Esperanto. I think because it's it's one a small group of people. I mean, relatively speaking, they're spread really far apart. Um, and they're, I mean, none of them are native. I mean, there's only a few native Esperanto speakers and even they aren't like, that's not like their native language as much as they were just born or they were raised in a bilingual household. Um, I guess, does that make you, does that doesn't, I feel like that doesn't really make you a native speaker though, because you're not, um, you're not like immersed in the culture and the life. The people are around you aren't really using it. It's just a like being born a polygot, I guess. Um, Jen, here's my dog. Voila, mi hundo. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, that's that's fair. Yeah. So they're native. It's just not their only native. So, um, now people who speak multiple languages natively, um, are they considered polyglots or are polyglots just typically people who have like learned it after? I assume anybody who speaks multiple languages would be a polyglot. Um, here dog. Here is a dog. Here is a dog. Um, its name is Sophia. Ah, oh, Sophia, you dog. Well, poly means a lot, yeah. But is two a lot? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know why I did that. Shouldn't have deleted the link. Probably Nightbot. Let me see. Uh, I'll log into Nightbot real quick and we'll be able to fix it. I went through and uh, I thought I fixed uh, a lot of stuff because uh, Sen was, uh, Sen Esperulo was saying something and it just deleted him. <laughs> it like went on the whole thing. It was like, nope. <laughs> it did not believe in him at all. Okay, there we go. Now it should be fine. What a time to be alive. Just click through some menus. You have trouble with Scottish or Irish accents? Yeah, beer does help. <laughs> if you all slur a lot. Meetups? Have you, uh, have you ever gone to the Esperanto, uh, the national conference? Today. Uh, me. Koi. Vinas. Oh, uh, it wasn't day. Last time I did day la. Deleted every previous post. <laughs> yeah, the hat. Oh, I remember that the hat had letter and it saw it as like a, it saw it as spam. <laughs> I just, I just re-enabled links. So you should be able to use links again. Actually, let me, maybe I can test it. Okay, now they work. So this is, so this did say you can use day, but it must have been because I used law. So, um, JC, you're totally right. Um, oh, I spelled Australia wrong. Australia. I forgot an R. 
and I need the little the little hoopty. So Fia estas mia ami Kino? Ami Kino? Is that right? Wow, 2002. Um, you did the Passporta, though? Oh, that would be amazing. I'm actually in the, um, I'm in the book for it, but, uh, or I used to be. I don't know if I still am. It's been a little while. Okay, let's go back to languages now that I got a little bit better of a, a handle on the accusative. So, Kiloni diras tion en la etala? So that's, um, how does one say that in Italian? I think, uh, I think you struggle, I think vocab is what you would struggle with primarily because vocab is just like, it's just such a huge base. Like I, I've spoke English for 30 plus years and I'm still learning words in it. Um, obviously Esperanto is quite a bit smaller, but if you, um, if you know the other stuff, I feel like the vocabulary can be a little bit easier, especially because the, a lot of the root words are similar or you can just kind of look them up or, um, but man, that's a long time. 16 years of learning Esperanto. Um, I've only been learning it off and on for maybe three years. But, I mean, I took a pretty long time off of that. Uh, she. My brain's shutting off. That's SI, right? She is reading. I don't remember reading either. Legas. A page is de la libra. Uh, Lib Lebron. No, I was wrong. There should not have been an N at the end of that. I was thinking, since she is she is acting upon the book, but I guess she's actually. It, this is a good one. Um, like where was talking about because this is she's acting on the page not the book and so yeah so the page itself has the end um i'm writing a long sentence in esperanto mis scribas frazon uh la facile hmm this one When there's a preposition, there's no accusative, huh? Oh, okay. I love the, I love our es uh, Esperanto and our language learning as well. Viro, legas, longas, li. Liberating? Ah! Hmm. Man, word order is going to just continue to get me. Okay, it's part of learning. The letters. La le terroin. There shouldn't be an N there. Estas. Is it lonjas? Lonjai? Because there are multiple letters, there must be a J at the end of the. Adjective as well. Yes. It's 
a it's a very easy like it's a pretty easy language i know that i mean obviously i struggle with some parts of it but i would struggle with parts of any language la latero i just i want to say that's latero yeah um from my father so if it's coming from your father would it be de la or now are we going to use l Because it's not belonging to your grandfather. It's coming from your grandfather. So I think we would use L. Uh, let's set L, Mia. Uh, is it Avo? Havas. Do? Uh, Now, this has to have a J, because it's pages, right? Yes! <laughs> oh, thank God. I did not. Uh, the Knights. Let's see. We have Bonan Matenon, Bonan Tagon, Bonan Vesperon, Le Soforto, Nocto. Estas very long. Oh, I didn't need an S there. What? <laughs> Night man, Nightbot really hates you. I have all of the spam protection turned off. Oh my gosh, maybe he should just leave my chat. It seems to be doing more help than... Um, where are you? <laughs> How do I use this? There. I just kicked him out. Just leave. <laughs> just leave, Nightbot. Diz from... L is for okay, so D is more belonging to, and L is more coming from. <laughs> no, no MLMs and timeshares, please. Tu vi comprenas la France? France? He oh. Li estas comenzando, se li rapide lernas. He is a beginner, but he learns quickly. She reads uh, uh, page El la libro. Ah! So when I'm using L, I should not use la. If I'm using de, I should use la. That seems to be what, what's coming up here. So la viro lejas rogas libroin. Wait. It has to be JN. Oh, thank God. Oh, the lawness doesn't doesn't matter. Ella and Dela are fine. Hmm. Wait, the cat is doing what? I know that I know what a cat is. Does it say the cat is in is in the sink? <laughs> I 
<rire> le chat est sur le table. La sange est sur la branche. <rire> I love that skit. Or that, uh, that uh, stand-up. Eddie Gizzard's awesome. <laughs> the mouse wins. Didn't the mouse go like up a tree? Yeah, he was on the on the chair. Yeah, under the chair, over the chair. Uh, Esperantisto estás en la parco. Eli dirás que vi estás bella. Eli dirás que vi estás bella. Que vi estás bella. They say. Mm. That you are beautiful. Beautiful. Um, Milegas la Italian. Ooh, Iomete? Milegas la Italian Iomete. Iomete. Ooh, I kind of like that. Iomete. It's like Piquito. Um, I. Read a little Italian. They say German is a difficult language. So that would be only diras, right? Because they say um, that. Uh, to you? La Germana Estas uh. <laughs> This is a tough one um. Lingua It's ma facile, right? Man, you go through a lot less of this when uh, <laughs> when you're using the keyboard. I'm glad that it's going faster. I wanted to be able to use it. Uh, Esperantis. Esperantis. Mm oh. -hmm. Esperantisto. The Esperanto speakers. Read. Lejas. Dictionaries. Vortar. Vortero? Roy and la cafe. Oh, es there were multiple Esperanto speakers. I only did one. Eo summer camp, huh? That would be fun. That would totally be fun. Uh, Chuvi parolas la italian la Francois la hispan uh, what is or ner no ow <laughs> I was only one type of off from that. I'll take it. I'll take that. No shame. Um, Mi estas neither nor Nick. Nick, Nick. Mi estas would be mi neck estas. Uh, uh, instruct. I can't spell that. Instruct. True. Instruisto. In. <laughs> that's how I. Instruisto. Instruisto. Neck. Comenzando. Oh. oh, 
You're, I'm saying for Voltero, Vort Arrow, yes, or rather than Vort Aro. Oh, I see, Aro instead of Arrow. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, no, you're not. Don't worry. You can correct me as much as you like. It's <laughs> it's all constructive, so I never mind. Okay, Vort Aro, Wisconsin. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I totally appreciate the help. Because, I mean, like, what's the point in learning the language if you're not going to, <laughs> um, if you're not actually going to, like, want to learn it correctly? Um, and also, I don't want to, I mean, this is going on the internet. I don't want to look like an idiot <laughs> any more than I already am. Amba. <laughs> Amba Lingvoi. Estas mal facila? Mal, mal facilai, right? Mal facilai? Mal facile? Mal facile, right? Like, more like a Y at the end. Yeah, that's one of the things I liked about Esperanto is since there's not really any like native speakers, even if you're a beginner and you're making a lot of mistakes, people are very um, polite about correcting you or they ask if you would like to be corrected um, or they just kind of ignore it because they know they know if you if you know enough of the language to try and get across what you're trying to get across. People don't people don't nitpick you, whereas like. I feel like um, some other languages would be, you know, English for one. If you come to America and you don't, you don't speak perfect English, you are given, you know, zero excuses, even if you speak six other languages, which is ridiculous. <sighs> They're Esperanto speakers. Spiokals. <laughs> I've been to Idaho. I've seen it. It does exist. <laughs> Uh, so now we're going to do, last time I only did one Esperanto speaker, so this time Esperantistoi. Um, Lejas. Votaro. Uh, uh, and la cafe. Ah. Only one off yet. I forgot the end. Uh, for vote. Vortaro, Vortaro, and la cafe. What? Ah! Forgot the J there. Man, I'm never gonna get all of these letters. It's like, I feel like I'm like trying to play Scrabble and just get extra points by like slamming J's and N's and stuff on the end. <laughs> Ah, uh, just, what is it? Just, just la revido? Just la revido? Thank you for, thank you for hanging out with us today and for helping me so much with, uh, with learning this. I really, I really appreciate everybody's input. For te vota ar. Roin and la cafe. So I don't want an N on vor on Vortaro. Vortaroin? Vortaroi. Um I'll look this up. Ah! What am I doing wrong? Oh no, I forgot the end there. Okay, so J there. Lay Jess. And, uh, I fail. What? Sorry, I didn't mean to hit that. That was terrible. 
So, because I'm trying to do in the cafe, not in a cafe. Is that correct? In cafe ho. La esperantistoi lejas put aroi in cafe ho. Thank the Lord. Wait, how am I still spelling this wrong? Esperantist. Oh, I forgot the T at the end of Esperantist. Yeah, that law screwed me up a bunch too. Uh, okay. Let's do let's do some colors. We've got a half hour left. Let's let's move on from languages a little bit. And, yeah, thanks. Fi finally, huh? <laughs> I made it. <laughs> uh, vidas la flagon. Ili vidas la flagon. They. See a. They see the. Let's see. What do you think flag on is? Flag? So they see the flag, not a flag. Mi havas verdan flagon kai ankau. She havas verdan flagon. Oh, let's see how I get. That sounded way German. Mi havas verdan flagon kai ankau. She havas verdan flagon. Mi havas verdan flagon, kai ankau, she havas verdan flagon. I have, is that green? A green flag, <gasps> the Esperanto flag maybe? And is that also? And she also has a green flag. Chila aquo estas blua? Blua? Is the water blue? Chula flago estas ruja, ru, wait, no. Ruga, ruj, nah, hold on. So that's, that G should be pronounced like a J. So it should be ruja. Chula flago estas ruja a blua. Chula flago estas ruja a blua. A little bit more roll on the S though, yeah? Chula flago estas ruja a blua. Ruja, or I mean on the R. Uh, is the... Flag, red or blue. Yeah, lots of lots of green flags in Esperanto. Not super, not my color either. Like, hence the overlay is pink. Like, I was gonna be green, and I was like, oh, let's go full Esperanto, and then I was like, nah, this looks dumb. <laughs> I love it, but it does not make for good overlays. <laughs> uh, the water is that gonna be color? The water has no color. La colo coloro estas malbella. The color is bad. Ugly. Chu ilia flago estas verde au blua? Verda? Verda? Is their flag green or blue? Killing it through these flags, man. I have a greenhouse. Mi havas verdan domon. He lives in the red house. Li lojas en la ruja domo. Ruja. I'm not a natural uh, R roller like I can, but I'm um, English doesn't really have too many words that roll R's in the middle of it. Whereas if you were to look at like Spanish or something like that, that's much more happens a lot more. Ilishatas uh, blancan panon kai ilishatas negran panon. Ili shatas blankan panon, kai ili shatas nigran panon. Nigran panon. I actually thought that the pronunciation on that I did pretty well, considering I hadn't seen most of these words. Uh, they like shatas. What is that, blankets? Oh, white. They like white bread, and they like, is that black bread? Nigran. Uh, their house, or their home, I guess, no, house, is, is that brown and white? Bruna Kai Blanca? 
Yeah, no English words rule are. Some some names do, but that's more if they're like from another if it's not a traditionally English name. Um do No, it's are they Risa? Al Nigra. Is it gray or black? Mm. Uh, the floor, le floroy, flowers. Estas, uh -huh, just doing, <laughs> doing it in Esperanto. Scottish R's are rolled a lot, yeah, like a lot, a lot. And that's, I think, what makes it hard for me to uh, listen to Scottish R, or Scottish is just how their R's, they roll over them, and then a bunch of other letters are dropped, and so that's, that's stuff. So, the flowers are red and blue. I do not like gray water. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, here, I like red floors. Oh, <laughs> that's just not a, what was the other one? Was it Jen that I got? Was that the one that was voila? Uh, now I gotta scroll. Yeah, Jen. So that makes a lot more sense. Li havas bluan floron. Li havas bluan floron. He has a blue and full on. He has a blue flower. Cool. The flowers are red and blue. La floroy estas rouge kai blue eye? Rouge eye? Rouge eye, right? Rouge eye kai blue eye. I do not like gray water. Minashatas grisan akvon. I remember akvon. Chuji estas grisa al nigra. Is it gray or black? Yes, yes. I like red flowers. Just. Um, does, oh, is the color of the house hella light? Oh, malhella, that means mean dark. Malhila? Hila? Uh, the, is that a kid or a baby? The child? La infano havas gepatroin. The child has parents and he loves them. No wait. What? Oh, and they love him. La infano havas geopatroin, kai ili amas lin. La infano havas gepatroin, kai ili amas lin. I gotta be better about taking natural pauses. Um, like, la infano habas geopatroin, kai ili amas lin. Don't have to get through it, I guess, as fast as possible. La suno estas flava, chuni. The sun is, is that yellow? Flava flav? Chuni? I love chuni. I just want to end like every sentence like Juni. Um, the Esperanto book is good. <laughs> yep. Mi manjas pomon flavan. Mi manjas pomon flavan. I eat a yellow apple. Chuvia, chuvia amico trinkas helon 
Hilan Biron. Um, does your friend drink light beer? Uh, mia, mia avo trinkas mal, malhilan biron. Uh, my grandfather drinks dark beer. I'm getting all the beer stuff right. <laughs> uh, the child has a green flag. La infanoj havas verdajn flagojn. Oh, the children have green flags. I gotta pay attention to that. Uh, Chivi have us Esperantan flag on. Do you an Esperanto flag? La infanoj have us verdajn flag. So this is the children have green flags. Yeah, Chuni for sure. And it's uh, especially like uh, when I lived over in uh, in Japan and Okinawa, you know, they always uh, they always end everything with hi, which means like yes. And so, um, you know, you'll uh, they'll give you some they'll give you your change back and then they'll be like, you know, have a good day. Yes. And you're like, hi. <laughs> and so like it and it's not just uh, there's a couple of languages that have that kind of um, at the end, you know, where it's just like, right. <laughs> I did the <that. laughs> um, Let's actually look at the. We didn't even look at the colors tips. Ankao, also where two, is placed immediately before the word it refers to. It is never placed at the end of the phrase, as is common in English. So I would never say, um, he likes to drink beer also. I'd say, he also. No, I'd say, also, he likes to drink beer. Like right over here on the side. Ankao mi ludas multe. I play a lot too. Mi ankao ludas multe. I play a lot too. Okay. So, ankao mi ludas multe. Interpretation is like, also, I play a lot. Like, like other people do it. It's kind of like saying like, you know, kind of only like people exist out there. Um, like others, uh, uh, also, so really, it directly means like, also, I play a lot. And then the second one would be, I also play a lot. Or like, I play a lot too. Because if it's ankao, ludas, that means you're playing much. Where if it's ankao me, that means like, also me, right? All right. Adjective form of Esperanto is Esperanza. Any word can be changed into an adjective by changing the ending to an A. Oh, any word, huh? That's pretty cool. Get some food in our system right before lunch. It's uh, 11.45 now, so we've got about 15 minutes left on the stream. Before I have to go put my baby down to sleep. <laughs> and uh, so we'll get, we'll get some Esperanto food. Um, he, Lee, volas doni, panon al Sofia. He doesn't, so volas is want. He does not want to give bread to Sofia. To be volas, uh, how is the C going to, it's a CH noise. Acheti, chuvi volas acheti kafon aution, acheti, to buy. I like that word too. Yeah, nespa. The thing about uh, nespa is that it, it sounds like it should be a lot shorter than it is. It's like that's three words. That's like one one noise for three words. <laughs> nespa. Um, do you want? Volas to buy coffee or tea. Oh, tea on. Do you want to buy coffee or tea? And count me ludas. I play as well as as other people do. So also me. Also me, I play. 
uh, me and Cal Ludas, I also play. So also I play, like other people do, and I also play as well as doing other things with my life. That's a, That makes sense. But I'm gonna I'm gonna bunk I'm gonna bunker it. <laughs> um, she does not, or she cannot pull us. She ne pull us trinky langton. She cannot drink water or milk. Mm. Vino? Oh, I know vino. What's up? Ili donas lacton al nia kato. Uh, he gives, or they are giving milk to our cat. Oh my gosh. Milk. I just kept typing link. <laughs> to our cat. Nia Cato, our cat. Uh, la colero... La color del, de la vino estas ruja, ruja. And the color of the wine is red. Mi achetas cafón. Mi, wait, mi achetas. Mi achetas cafón. Said chatas tinky. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Me Ashitas or Ach Achita oh, now I'm screwing it up. Me Achitas Kafton say Shatas Trinky Trinky sounds ridiculous. Trinky tea on <laughs> Everybody Trinky tea on Um I like coffee or I buy coffee. Um, isn't buy in French is close to that, right? Isn't it like, uh, is it attaché or something like that? Uh, oh, this is but, not and. But, like drinking tea. Acheté, yeah. Uh, does your friend drink light beer? Chuvia amikino trinkas helan biron. Um, I don't, I cannot buy, no, I cannot give to your, I cannot give you money. Oh, oops, that was just a typo. Yeah, lots of Esperanto comes from French. French, Spanish, Polish, Italian. And there's some from, like, Romanian, I think. Um, she cannot drink milk. I cannot give you money. I think, I think Esperanto will help you learn more French. Um, I think if you learn Esperanto first and then learn English, French, or Spanish, it's just wildly easier. Did we look at the food? We didn't. Infinitives. The ending dash I indicates the infinitive. For example, ami, to love. Oh, so ami plus co. Wait, where does the K come in? So if Ami is to love, Amiko is a friend, right? I get it. Trinky to drink, uh, Kuiri to cook. Also the verbs povas for can, volas for want, devas for must, and shatas for like. I assumed it was just kind of the same kind of a uh, root word because, uh, again, French uh, friends are friends are ami, right? 
I was just thinking, and then like, okay, and then nouns have got to end in an O. So, but you couldn't do A M I O. So you would have to be A M I K O if you were to like naturally evolve that word, I guess. I don't know. Probably, co- probably just coincidence. Um, but it does. I wonder if we're going to come across any words in Esperanto that have ami that don't designate a type of like love or friendship or something like that. Um, so with these infinitives, me volas dansi, I want to dance. I want to dance. Mi shatas manji, I like to eat. If I said mi shatas manjas, I like eating. Is that correct? So this is more like, um, yeah, maybe it comes from Latin. Chuvi povas farition? Can you do that? In English, the word to is not used after the words can and must, but this is an oddity of English. What? Uh, like... Wait, why would I say to? Note that in English, the word to is not used after the words can and must. Hmm. Am I to love, amico, friend? The KO is an affix on its own. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, like a, a romance root is a good way to say it. Amigo, yeah, amigo is Spanish. Are you saying these, these infinitives are called uh, modal verbs? Neck is neither. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mantan, matan men. Manjo? Oh, must and can are modal verbs. Hmm. I don't know that I've, I have much experience with those because, like, when would I, I mean, in English you would just say, like, must you do that, right, instead? I don't know. Maybe I won't even have to worry about it. <laughs> It'll probably just come naturally. Uh, or, well, maybe not. Um, so, manj is eating, right? We have maten, which is morning. So this really means morning eating. Or morning meal. Here we have lunch meal. Or day meal, rather. And night meal. Though I'm surprised that this is more um, Vesper and not more like Nocto. Would there be a, if I were to say like Nocto Manjo, <laughs> which sounds like a superhero. Um, if I were to say Nocto there, would it be like a midnight snack maybe? <laughs> Manji is to eat. Medivas manji, I must eat. Not, I must to eat. Yeah, but why would I say to eat? Oh, I see, because this is like to dance. Whereas like... I see what you mean. There is no to. There's no word there. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Kun, kun, and kunikun. Kun means with... Kune, together. Kune kun, together with. Um, not so much. You're ready in the fridge, right? Like late at night, and uh, it's a, it's a night meal. It's a, it's fourth meal, like Taco Bell. <laughs> um, okay, so kun, kun kune and, and kune kun, and which makes me think of that uh, the game that just came out, or I guess came out last year. Um, Kune kun together with would that be so if I'm with you we're kun if it's us together we're kune if we are together with a group of friends maybe that would be kune kun like we're together as part of a larger maybe um pli and all pli all more than so Leopomo estas Plia granda or mia pomo. His apple is, this means comparison, bigger. 
to my apple. Oh no, it means it means it means more than. It doesn't mean okay, so his apple is more bigger than my apple, really, right? His apple is more bigger. Co so could I just say could I say Lia Pomo estas Pli olmia pomo? Because if it means more than, can I just say his apple is more than my apple? Doesn't that typically mean that it's going to be? No, I, well, that could mean more expensive, couldn't it? So like this one. Pli uh, bon olmi. See, that's not like more than me. That's better than me. Just plea and play. I feel like I'm I'm gonna have to get more into this, but like this says like is Sophia more pretty than her? This says he cooks more good than me. So it's like it's almost like a literal translation. You need to specify more or less what? Yeah, that that makes sense because I couldn't just say, uh, "Lee, is that Kuiras?" Hmm. I couldn't say "Lee Kuiras, plea ol me" because that would be he cooks more than me, right? Now, would that be an appropriate thing to say, or would I have to say like "Lee Kuiras, plea amount," whatever the amount would be? Ol me, like multi or something, like more than me. Uh, keel. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to actually getting to use this. I want to see how it. Ol me, yeah. Because all me is just like, then me, yeah. He cooks verb more than me. But so my question is, if you don't put a verb there, like if I just said, could, could I just say he cooks more than me? Or do I need to say like he cooks an amount larger than I do or he cooks more frequently than me? Um, or could that just be context? Like if I say he cooks more than me, I guess that kind of depends on where the conversation is going. Pleol me. <laughs> Pleol me sounds like a, like, oh, poor little old me. Pleol me. Uh, I like that. Pleol me. Pleol me a pomo. Yeah. Ple, ple, estas plea, estas ple granda o mi a pomo. Kiel means as. So like an accusative. So you're not saying we eat strawberries for dessert. You're saying we eat strawberries as a dessert. Ah, I don't know. That might just be kind of splitting hairs. Um, pro and char. This should be char, right? Like a ch. Pro and char. Mi pomo estas plia o shia. My apple is more than hers. More what? The verb is fine, but the noun needs to be specified. Yeah. Because the, the apple could be more money than hers. It could be larger than hers. It could be lighter or darker than hers. Um, however, if I were to say that, if I would just went up in English and I was like, my apple's more than hers, like, it's just a different connotation than it would be in Esperanto. Because we just assume, uh, I think in English, when you assume more, you just mean like larger amounts. Um... So pro and char are similar, but not interchangeable. Char means because, 
but pro means because of or due to or on account of or so that's a real like per my last email sounding kind of thing isn't it right so char is like well because this happened such and such has or wait no oh i see so this one over here we're gonna use pro because of my big appetite i'm gonna eat pizza it is because of the appetite this down here where they're using char I am eating the strawberries because they're tasty. I'm not saying I could say because this I could say because the strawberries are tasty, I am eating a lot of them and then I would use pro. Right? No, cuz this one says right here, cuz the weather is bad, we can't go to a restaurant. Because of my big appetite, I'm eating two pizzas. Because of the bad weather, we cannot go. Hmm. I don't understand how those are. S See, like this one right here, are these not interchangeable? Because of the bad weather versus because the weather is bad. Hmm. I'm eating the strawberries because they are tasty. Because the weather is something. Now, if I were. Could I say. Because of the tasty strawberries, I am eating them. Then I would use char, right? But if I say, or then I would use pro, but if I say because the strawberries were tasty or are tasty, it seems like you're, you're using char when you're, when you're like, because the something is something else. It's like, a, whereas pro is like, because of this. <laughs> Let's see, it's a that is a bad example because like even right here, you're just saying okay, the f second half of these, these two are the same. Can't go to a restaurant, okay? So because the weather is bad, or because of the bad weather. Oh, so literally because of. Um. So, because the time is noon, we'll be ending the stream shortly, um, would be char, right? Or pr the pro version would be because of the late time, we'll be ending shortly. Yeah. That's a, it's a, that's going to be tricky because in, I mean, the English language, people already have problems with because, um, I mean, how many times has there, so many English teachers will tell people like, you're not allowed to start a sentence with because, and you don't know how to use it and to make it into multiple sentences and stuff like that, because they're just not teaching people appropriately how to use English. Um, but I think that's going to make it harder as an English speaker, because we don't really have, there, there isn't really this, des this designation really, because I wouldn't. I don't know that I would take the time to specify um, unless it was to like a child. Um, then I would be like, because the weather is bad, we can't go, right? If the weather was good, we could go. Then here I'd say because of the bad weather, we can't go because of good weather. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I think... Uh, We'll get, we'll get into it. This was just the food part and the first one. God, look how fast I ran through this checkpoint and it's just taking me forever to go back through it and to relearn as you're building on. It just, this whole part, you can do this in like, a, you know, two hours, two, three hours. And then all of this starts taking longer and longer and longer because you've got to go back through and you're not just learning, um, you're not just learning vocab that you're inserting into sentences. You're learning modifiers and accusatives and infinites and, you know, everything else as you're going. So, um, <laughs> it's, I can't believe I'm on part three and I'm barely past the second checkpoint. I assumed I'd be like, okay, this will be part one. Then we'll do like part two the next day. And yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> that is not at all what happened. <laughs> um, but I think that's not necessarily bad. Um, I like having the opportunity to go back and especially for people who don't get to, uh, Oh no. Why is this making noise? Stop. Um, <laughs> what 
Why can't I mute this? Remedy. Um, but I like going back through all of these things because I feel like it matters to um, it matters to the people who check in on the streams later, you know, to do a little bit of recap. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think we are going to, um, if you guys, since you guys are my my core Esperanto group, really, um, Regran, who didn't join us earlier today, he's usually on here and, and, and chatting. He's actually streaming. So I think I would like to maybe, maybe raid him, but I'm still learning how this raid stuff works. So... Um, Bear with me a little bit, but thank you, everybody, for joining today, and thank you for helping me with the pronunciation, um, for tips, for vocab, for explaining these things, because you are such a bigger, like, it's such a bigger group of people to talk things out with, and the more you teach to others, the more you retain. It's it's an ungodly percent, like, 75 to 90%, 95% of what you teach is, what you, uh, is stuff that you retain for a longer amount of time. So when you guys are helping in this chat and, and when you're actively engaging with each other, you're also making Esperanto sync better for you, and you're making it sync better for me, and you're making it a really great community. So thank you to everybody who, who joined. Um, we're going to go... Uh, we're gonna go raid raid Reg Ryan, and uh, he speaks Esperanto. So by all means, um, feel free to say hello, and thank you again for joining. Oh, nope. Just kidding. It says no. I think I said Reg Ryan. Reg Ran. My bad. Ninkan Nin Ken Nin Dan Kinde and Denkam Denkam Multan. Let's go.